I'm actually mad excited, bro. I don't know why. I'm You're the loser, Moz. No one cares about you. Everyone go to my video. Watch my video. Y'all ain't ready for this. You guys are not ready for this. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Welcome back to another video, another Q&A. Number one, we have our lovely Yusuf with us today. He's going to be helping me answer questions. We're actually doing the same Q&A on his channel, except he is going to be answering the questions on here. But if you want to see my answers for the same questions, you're going to have to go on Yusuf's channel. If you want to see his answers, go to my video. And if you guys are coming from my video, you know what, Zam, <laughs> Tribe, what is poppin', homie? Crazy collabs going what on. What is up? Y'all are here for my answers. <laughs> I feel honored to be here. Let's get into it. Let's see what Yusuf has to say about these questions. We'll start off with this one. How did we meet? How did you guys meet each other? Uh, there was a time. I was like super, super lonely and I was walking down the street mm -hmm. and uh, And what? <laughs> I, was, I was gonna say there's like a dumpster and was, like, <laughs> <Yeah>. a random <laughs> kid kind of like, popped out of nowhere, bro. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. How did you guys meet? Uh, I think in reality, how did we meet? Last year, if you guys check our channels, we had videos of each other up. That's when I first met him, mm -hmm. uh, was, and I wasn't so, so close with him, but as time progressed, he moved here a couple months ago for, for a club. That's kind of how like our relationship just, just kind of flourish yeah and both of us are very like interested in like productivity self-growth positive change in our lives and yeah so kind of like similar interests and whatnot yeah. yeah what are ways that you can balance dunya and your deen mm. it's tough it's a tough question man. in reality that, that question kind of doesn't really make any sense yeah because when you talk about like balancing your dunya and your deen it's like okay you have to pick and choose it's right? like the two and, things like, are exclusive yeah it's like yeah. or like polar opposites you yeah. know what i mean try your best to live um, through the lens of Islam as much as you can, right. you know what I mean? Without obviously becoming too, too extreme and like judging people and going out of your way to like inconvenience yourself for the sake of Islam, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of like what the what the, the balance is and whatnot. Okay, so this question just simply and plainly says advice for teens. <laughs> There's somebody to choose from. I think, okay, I think like general advice in teens is like understand Two things. What you do when you are a teenager is very important on how your 20s is going to unfold. And the second thing is understand that a lot of things that you may think that hold a lot of value in your life aren't really going to matter too so much as soon as you enter your 20s. I feel like mm -hmm. a lot of people, they over-prioritize high school. They over-prioritize a lot of like the relationships that they have outside of high school. Right. But then when you step into your 20s and you graduate high school and you get to that understanding when you're past your teens, you get that sense of like accountability and more responsibility of like, right. I'm an actual adult now, like how do I hold myself, you know yeah. what I mean? My advice for all the teenagers out there would be those two things. Focus a lot on the major decisions that you're making when you are a teenager because it's going to play a part in your 20s. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if things do go wrong, you don't have to worry too, too much about it because when you're an adult, you're gonna be more responsible and you'll be able to tackle those challenges even more. And stay humble, that's like the biggest thing ever. It's like stay yeah. humble, don't have any arrogance in your heart. It can be things that you don't even say to people. It can be things that you just think that you're higher of other people or you're not like in the same caliber, yeah. right? We were speaking about this earlier. Don't think that you're better than other people and it's okay for you to not associate yourself with them, you know? Mm -hmm. If anything, you should go towards those people and be kind to them and make them feel loved so that they can feel good around you. And it's just a humbling experience, you know? So stay humbled and stay away from arrogance when you're a teenager. So little plug, I actually made like a video on this exact topic on my YouTube channel, like advice that I would give my 18 year old self. And I, I mentioned a couple things, but the one thing that I will highlight, and I always say this is, Ooh, I like this one. Who is, who's your inspiration in life? Inspiration? This is gonna sound super cliche, but recently, like for the first time in my life, I can say this with like, like, with, like truthfully, it's genuinely the proper style of Like so I, actually bro, cause like- Love that. Ugh, man, like it's it's been a journey getting there just to say like to genuinely say that he is my role model mm. You know what I mean? But I think there comes a time in life where you kind of piece the dots together for Islam and they they, they truly start to make sense to yeah. you You know and I've been living here in Dallas for over a year I've never ever took advantage or capitalized on the, the immense amount of knowledge and random man that are here mm -hmm. Up until he moved in, you know up until mm -hmm. he moved like to Dallas he started going to different halakas and he started, like I see his story, he's just like around Sheikh Hormuz of the man so much. And I kind of realized like, yo, why, why don't I go out and why don't I do that? So I started going to different halakas and whatnot and just being surrounded by people who have so much knowledge of Islam and they talk about the problems that you and I go through as yeah. individuals. 
and you just realize that yo islam has all the answers that i've been looking for for my entire life why can't i you know like what why am i looking why am i I trying to find why am i listening to people yeah other sources you know why am i looking at a whole bunch of other things and me being a hafiz right i read all these self-development books there's nothing wrong about doing that but i'm completely neglecting the fact that i memorized the greatest book that's ever been created you know what i mean bro so it's like when you see the sheikhs talk about the solutions to all your problems and he's a prime example like everything he's done in his life was literally there from from beginning to end even before his like his prophethood it's like there's there's no one else that you should look up to every other characteristic every other personality that anyone else has the prophet had before the prophet the way he spoke when he walked into a room, how his presence was, you know? Yeah. Like, people were glad to see him. Like they people, weren't... His enemies were, were, you know what I mean? Would trust him with their own money. That's crazy. But you gotta think yeah. about that, you know what That's I mean? Crazy. To sit here and be like, yes, I am Muslim, and to still neglect the fact that, like, the greatest man Dang. that ever walked the earth, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like right in front of you. We have like... access and we have belief to that man. Yeah. The greatest man that ever walked the earth, and we're just neglecting it, you know? What is your favorite Sunnah act, and how often do you follow it? Dang. Yeah. That's a really good question. I, I don't follow this as much as I should. I'll just say that, put that out there right now so I can follow up with the others. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's going to the masjid, right? Mm. I, I feel like here in Dallas, I take it for granted, man. There's like so many masjids around. Yeah. And because I moved here for work and because I moved here for like the sake of like content and to network and whatnot, I always give myself kind of like the excuse that, oh, I can just pray when I'm at home, you know? Yeah. Or like I'm doing this thing, I can just pray at home. Uh, not realizing that there's a mushroom like 10 minutes just down the yeah, street. Yeah. Every time I go in there, it's like this humbling experience. You walk in, and the only reason that you're there is literally for your like your religious for for, for Islam. You know, yeah. it's for the betterment of your of your of your iman and your deen and to get closer for Allah. Say you you struggle to go to the masjid in the beginning, um, but you actually get to the masjid, you leave feeling way you better. You feel f- way better. Way That's better. A fact. You know what I mean? I feel like your soul just knows that. So much Quran is being recited here. So much halakas of like Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's name is being Subhan mentioned Allah. here. You know, and that's like I think it's like the core that every human being needs is the masjid. You know, yeah. it's the masjid. It's like the house of Allah, bro. It's like the closest thing we're gonna get to going to Medina. Subhan and Allah, yeah. You know? Crazy. So and it's, it's literally like ten minutes away. Yeah, yeah. We were talking Crazy. about this also. Or I feel like every question we say is like, <laughs> we're like we were talking we about this before. We're like, because <laughs> we're amazing points, man. This should have been a podcast. No, but what is it called? Uh, we were talking about this before. I, I was telling him how we feed our, our stomachs like two to three times a day. Yeah. Right? Allah SWT tells us to pray five times a day. Our prayers, our salah is like food for our soul. You need to feed your soul yeah. more than you feed yeah, your no, actual We're not body. like, Joe, you see how much how much effort we put into it? finding a, forget cooking, finding a place to eat, bro. Like, yeah. you know, where should we eat? You, you, you go on Google Maps, Yelp, you go on like <laughs> Safari, everything. You start like narrowing yeah. down like your things. You ask all the boys what you want to eat. But imagine if we did that with like Salah. If we're feeding our bellies two to three times a day and we're putting in that much effort and that much thought, why don't we put on that same amount of thought and intention when we're feeding our soul? So that's yeah. that's a sign of that I'm like, I slack on and like I just, yeah. but I love so much, you know, because every time you go, it's like this new revelation. Um, I'm just gonna mention some benefits that you get from going to the masjid in case some of y'all need motivation. Number one, praying Aisha at the masjid counts as if you prayed half the night in prayer, and then praying Fajr at the masjid counts for the other half of the night. Every step that you take towards the masjid gives you one good deed and it removes a sin. And one of the seven people under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment is someone whose heart was attached to the masjid. Also, in general, or generally, the people that you find at the masjid are going to be people that you want to surround yourself with, right? People that go to halaqahs, people that are connected to the deen. These are people that you want to be friends with and that you want to be around. How old are you when you realize your deen should be your number one priority? <laughs> Yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put that in. I'm just yeah. No, but like literally. <laughs> no, but actually. We were bro. having this conversation like today. <laughs> I freaking God. love that. No, like actually though. So the question was, how old were you when you realized your dean should be your number one priority? <laughs> <laughs> it says, this goes yesterday. <laughs> no, but like actually yesterday though, bro. Cause I'm gonna just leave it at that. Bro, bro. he, had, a, he, he that. had like a midlife crisis, bro. We were in the car. He's like, I'm gonna bro, leave I it at do that. this and this and that. I was like, no, you like, fine. You re- there comes a time when you just realize that you're diverting yeah. away from the path. And you're like, yo, what am I doing? Okay, rapid fire round. Maybe three questions max. Uh, it'll be like either yes or no questions, or we can answer it in one phrase. Uh, if you could eat one meal in your entire life, what would it be? I'm wise. I mean, uh, whoa! Oh, this is probably the most important question of the entire Q and A. Orange juice, 
or apple juice. Three, two, one. Apple Orange juice. Ju I'm not doing this Q and A anymore. We're done. We're done. Apple juice though. No, bro. I literally said. You bro, said how can you say that not, to me and I, you know? You said you, said you the, know my. You're weird. You're weird. Go drink your OJ, bro. I will. You don't have any. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We'll answer one marriage question. Okay. Do, you, do you see yourself married in two years? Hell no! There you go. That's a damn lie. That's a damn lie. Alright, that is going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed, benefited a bit. Jazakallah khair Yusuf for doing a video with me. He is very weird, but that is why I love him. Listen, make sure to go over to Yusuf's channel to see my answers for those questions. If you're not already subscribed to Yusuf, what is wrong with you, Ghost? You should be subscribed to him already, obviously. And yeah, you want to say anything else? Uh, thank you all so much for if you guys watched both videos. Just comment down below that you watched both yeah. videos. When I was a kid watching YouTubers, I never really understood how much effort actually goes behind yeah. these videos. So uh, just thank you guys so so much for watching these videos, and uh, we're gonna see you inshallah in the next video. Inshallah. All right, let's go drink some OJ. Apple juice. God damn it. <laughs>